Hey guys, wanted to take a moment to chat with you about power of letting things go. I have a hard time with this topic just because I know when I was going through this, the idea of letting things go seemed impossible. And a lot of times I'll see comments on videos like this where people are like, I can't ever let it go. You know, this is, I'm never going to get over this. I'm never going to stop thinking about this or some variation of that. I get it. But the reality is, is that you have to, at some point, let things go to give yourself peace, right? It's not that you're excusing what happened to you. It's not that you're agreeing with it. It's not that you're doing anything to, to acknowledge it or let them get away with something. And this is, and I just want to pause for that for a moment, because that's one of the things that, I mean, I used to think that too. It's like, if I don't fight this, then they're getting away with it or she's getting away with it. And, you know, I have to, you know, there has to be some revenge or there has to be some accountability or justice or whatever the hell the word you want to use is. And let me just say, if you can achieve that, if you've started this and you're like, yeah, I've made a point here and I made a point there and, and things are turning the right way. Okay, fine. Right. If you are able to do that, outstanding. However, <laughs> I know in my situation, it felt like all I was ever doing was punching myself in the face, figuratively, and I wasn't accomplishing anything. All it was doing was keeping me wrapped, to, connected to, and wrapped in the chaos with her, and it was holding me back. Now, let me just say, and I hate to say this, but this is the reality of it, is I was stuck in that mode for a couple years. You know, it wasn't like one of those things where I'm like, oh, I had this epiphany and everything got better in a moment. I had to work at it. I had to basically lather, rinse, and repeat doing the same thing, not getting any acceptable results, not getting any accountability. Every time someone told me something that, oh, you can check meter in this way. I mean, I even had this sometimes with the Department of Child Support Services for my county where they would say, oh, it is like this. And I'm like, oh, wow, great. You know, she's messed herself over and, you know, this is going to blow up in her face. And I would try to connect with her to say, do you understand what you've done? Only to ultimately find out the information that they told me was wrong. And one of the times on that was whenever uh, she turned me in, whenever when I she found out I had a girlfriend, she turned me in for being a deadbeat, not paying child support, which they were garnishing out of my pay. So, you know, there's a nugget of truth to that whenever the government shutdowns happened like a decade ago. But the reality is, when uh, they called me and said, we're coming after you. And they said, don't pay her anymore. We're going to figure this out. The problem was they didn't have the whole context of it. They thought, they believed her that I, you know, that we were separated, that she had full custody of the kids and that I wasn't paying a dime and I was a deadbeat. And they're like, hey, if you're paying her money, thinking like I was paying her directly, it's like, stop doing that. You know, do not give her any more money. We're going to tell your employer to stop sending money. If they're doing it, just stop. And I'm like, uh, really? Well, the problem was, is that I had a court order. I was paying child support. So when they told me that and I called her and said, hey, you realize what you've just done. It's going to take them three months to do this. And you're not going to get any child support or alimony for three months. I can survive. Can you? You know, that type of thing, which just made me look like a dumbass because, um, you know, when it came down to it, it was not, not, uh, you know, didn't happen or didn't play out the way it looked like it was. Here, here's the thing. Numerous examples of that where I was like, okay, cool. You know, finally her stupid decision is going to have a consequence. <laughs> the reality, reality is, the, real, the reality was there was a no consequence, not for her. Now I'm laughing about it now, but it was, it, it, and the reason I'm saying this is that if you're going through this thing where you're trying to you know, go tit for tat or toe to toe or whatever. And you're noticing that it's just blowing up in your face and it's sucking you back down into the vortex of chaos. You've got to, at some point, like I did, you have to say enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. I can't keep fighting this. I can't keep, you know, playing this stupid game, sucking me into that, their chaos because it's not helping me and it's not helping the kids and it's not helping anything. Now, 
as I'm saying this, if you're immediately going through this, you're probably like, what, I gotta just give up, I gotta just let them win, and they get away with everything, and I'm gonna be a slave, and I'm blah, 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 blah. You know, you freaking go off the deep end, you start catastrophic thinking, you just, you gotta stop yourself on it, okay? Because I can relate, because I did the same thing, you know, when people told me, you know, you know you're gonna be paying her forever, and which I have been, and you're never gonna get your life back, which is bullshit, because I did, and I have. It's not the life that I had envisioned before, but it's came, it turned around. It took a long time. But a lot of it, I think, for me, had to get, was, a lot of this, for me, was when I finally got to the point where I said, okay, I can't do this anymore. I can't let her occupy any more space in my, my head. I have to stop, because this is going to effing kill me either through a heart attack or a stroke or some, you know, other self, uh, some other means. Um, and it's really tough, right? I mean, it, it, when you're going through this and, they, and they've just obliterated your entire life, they've obliterated your future, everything you worked for, they're attacking your reputation. It's like all this sh stuff, all this stuff that they're doing that just, just like drives that nail home that they've really mess with your life and it's, it's it's there's a transition period right and what i've noticed let me finish that thought what i mean is there's a transition period in this to where you are so angry and so fixated and you want them to pay and you want a consequence you want to turn every human being that you can run into onto your side and show what an evil POS the other person is. It's an exercise in frustration. It's an exercise in futility and it's wasted energy. I wasted so much of my time and energy that I could have been focusing on rebuilding my life, focus on finding my own peace and focused on strengthening my relationship with my kids. And I can tell you that I, because of some of the decisions I was making early on, I was putting all three of those things at significant risk. I mean, I was systematically destroying my relationship with my kids. I was feeding into the dogma that the ex was saying about me and, you know, accidentally proving her point of, oh, it's just so sad that your dad is so angry all the time or he just, he just can't let it go. You know, all this crap, you know, oh, we got to do this because he'll be mad. I mean, that's still, that, that still happens. The only difference now is the kids are like, um dad doesn't care about, you know, this scenario or that scenario, like, you know, being a few minutes late here, whatever. And, you know, it's like, why are you trying to ramp it up? But that's what it is, right? It's trying to get that stress and anxiety. And then when the kids would come into the house, if I'm like, you know, where have you been or upset? Then it's like, oh, you know, it proves, it proves the other person's point. Do not fall for the trap. Do not take their bait. The main thing about this is you have to Make the decision with yourself to where you come at one point and just say, okay, I can't keep doing this. This is not sustainable. It's not the end of the world, though it feels like it. And I deserve an opportunity to have the potential to maybe find some peace and happiness after this. And I, that's the way I had to word it back then because I didn't believe that there was a chance that there would be any peace and happiness or any recovery from this. I figured it was just gonna be crap the entire time and life would never get better. And there would always be this, you know, sort of Damocles hanging over my head, just waiting to drop at any moment. And if you're within the first couple of years of this, and absolutely, if you are in current litigation, you are probably feeling like that at a thousand percent, like, you know, you're just ready to pop. You have to slow yourself down, Take a deep breath, listen to some stupid meditation music. Funny story, last night I had my stupid little meditation music. I was listening to some, some chanting, you know, oh, that type of thing. And it would ding and I left it on and my kids were texting me like, would you please turn that off? For some reason it relaxes me and it does the complete opposite for them. But whatever it is for you, I, if, it's the, if it's the meditation music, great. If it's meditation, great. If it's going and working out and pumping iron and doing whatever, which I wish I could have got myself into, great. You have to do something for yourself and you have to take little bites of this little apple or this big apple and just nibble at it to where you can start to see some improvements 
and start to get that separation to where your ex is not infecting your mind every waking moment. But I will say, and I've said this before, to be perfectly honest, if I didn't have this channel, I probably would not be thinking about this stuff, worrying about it, or spending any time on it. What keeps me going on this is I know I I get emails and I get I see comments and I even see Facebook posts that aren't you know on different forums that I'm not even really active on that where people it's obvious that they're stuck in this it's obvious that they're like you know this is you know my whole life is over I just saw an article about uh, one of the uh, Power Rangers who six months three to six months ago his wife filed for divorce and he self deleted a couple of days ago. Uh, now there's all kinds of you know nuances could be that there's some other thing going on or maybe he was a piece of crap and he didn't want to be exposed but the statistics are a lot of times people in that mode they lose their identity they lose their family they lose their purpose they lose all their financial security and they lose their hope and once you lose all of that and you cannot see a pathway through this you, it can be extremely devastating uh, I haven't gotten as many emails as I used to in the past about this channel, catching them at those dark times and helping them to, you know, stick around for another day and then another day and then another day. And the next thing I know, two years or a year or so down the road, I get an email saying, thank you so much. I'm not following your channel anymore, but you had a profound impact on my life. You basically saved me. Thank you. But I, you know, I'm not, I'm not unsubscribing because I don't like your content. It's because I don't need the content. And to be perfectly honest, there comes a time that if you're continuing to watch this stuff, it starts to wane and drain on you. So it's not super healthy. So start thinking about the potential for the possibility that, hey, maybe life will get better towards the end of this and just find some ways to get some peace back into your life. When you first start doing that, I'll just, the last little part of this, what I'll say is when you first start doing that, it's going to be really difficult. You might see, a, you know, half a day of like, wow, I kind of feel like my old self. And then they'll find some way to, you know, boop, poke you right in the eye and uh, have you start crashing back down. But that's, and, but you'll, you'll notice it'll be like 100% of your time will be hell. And then it'll be like you'll have 10% or 5% of time that's like, hey, this ain't so bad. And then, you know, it'll flare back up. But that 5 to 10% turns into 10 to 15% to 15% to 35%, to 35% to 50%. And then it gets to the point where it's like, wow, you know, things have actually gotten better. And you'll probably be like me where you'll be like, wait a minute, things got better, but nothing changed. You know, I mean, I didn't, she didn't get held accountable she didn't get hung up, you know, hung up, you know, uh, strung up, strung up in this town square, you know, with this S scarlet letter on. Well, it wasn't cheating, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, you know, there wasn't like, you know, oh, they're right there. See, she's evil. No, there are still people that think she's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese. You know, whatever. doesn't matter anymore. And that's the thing, right? It's like it was nothing changed. It wasn't like I had a crushing victory back in court. It wasn't like, you know, child support got reduced and, and they forced her to go back to work. This chick lived off me for like eight years straight, was retired on me while I'm basically just treading water, you know, like a little puppy, you know, treading water, hoping that I don't freaking run out of energy and drown. I didn't. And while I was still happening, while things still felt like crap, I got my life back. I started feeling happy. And I started relaxing and things that used to stress me out changed I, I i think it was one of those things where the the reality of it is is i finally got to the point where i accepted that i cannot control the world and i made my peace with it and i'm like okay i get it you know i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and i'm okay with it and it do guys everyone watching this i'll tell you that was it's phenomenal that i spent like probably the first 30 years 35 years of my life i got divorced when i was 40 so there's a period of time where everything was stressed. I was constantly worried about everything. There was a period of time before the relationship, the marriage fell apart, where I started like, hey, things are pretty good. And I started not worrying about things, which the reality of that is in that period of time, she realized that she couldn't control my emotions anymore. So she lit everything on fire and burned everything to the ground, which there was a period of time before, like right before the divorce, 
and like two to three years after the divorce where it was being drugged back down and that at constant anxiety and stuff like that. And uh, I finally been able to uh, get to a good point, get to a good space, good point in my life. I think that is inevitable for you too. You just have to make sure that you don't light your whole self on fire and make any really colossal mistakes and just try to relax a little bit and just kind of like, okay, you know, this is a roller coaster I don't want to be on, but it's going to be okay. So let me know what you think about that, if that makes any sense, while I'm starting to get attacked by gnats. And uh, I will catch you on another video later. Take care. Bye.